Hello, Cliff here, and I'm in my shed. Sometimes in my shed, I make coin rings. And if you've never seen a coin ring, I'll give you a close up and show you what one is. So, the intriguing thing about a coin ring, this one's been made from an half crown, is that you've got the coin on the outside and you've got the coin on the inside. So, how's it done? That's the intriguing bit. Well, it's not that hard really. Uh, basically what you do is get a coin, punch an hole through the middle of it and sort of turn it inside out. So that's all you wanted to know about coin remaking, you'd know it now. You don't have to watch anymore, but if you're a bit more interested in the details and how it's done, I'll be showing you in the uh, little series, I think there's going to end up being about four videos on this, so I want to keep them reasonably short. I'll show you how it's done and show you how I've made some of I'll show you some of the tools that I've made to make coin rings. So this is how to make a coin ring part three. Alright, so I've re, re annealed the coin again, it's still a bit wet. It's exactly the same process. Every time you anneal it, just get it red hot dunk it in cold water. This is my ring stretcher, little word about the ring stretchers. This is just a Chinese one, it was, uh, I mean I've had this, um, must be well, several years now. You can spend a lot of money on a ring stretcher or you can buy one of these. This was about 70 quid when I bought it. Um, I think they probably got a bit better since I bought this one. A guy who bought a uh, one of my coin ring tools recently he's got a channel it's called Oracle's Cave he's a self-confessed newbie you might want to look that up and see how he's getting on because he is new um, he's just bought one of these the base plate that comes with these which are basically for ring sizing my one was absolutely useless it's kicking about here somewhere in the box actually it's just I'll show you it Right, here it is as it came. It's, it's even still got its oil on it, but um, these holes here are so rough. I mean, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my finger going down there. I mean, they're, they're, they're awful. Anyway, Awful to the point of being useless to be honest with you, but I really wanted it for stretching the coin ring, so it's not really a problem. Now he just bought one, uh, that's Oracle's Cave I'm talking about. He just bought one and he shows that on his YouTube videos. He's one of these, he looks perfect, they've got highly polished, so maybe in the couple of two or three years since I bought this one, they've come on a bit. Um, and I think they're about 100 quid now. But it's the way to go if you want to make coin rings. You, if you want to make any of them uh, to any sort, of, any sort of speed, you want one of these. You can get one of these. These are, uh, I think you can get these on eBay. Uh, this is this is what I started with before I bought the ring stretcher. Basically, you put your coin over this. And it's got like stepped groups steps on it. And what you do is you put that in there, bang this down with an hammer, and it will stretch the coin out. They work quite well, um, and they're only about a tenner. So to get started with, they're not a bad thing at all. They just take a long time and you do have to hold them. It's quite even difficult to put them in a vice or something because as you do go down, this this bit does come through the bottom. So, but to get started with, they're, they're, they're not that bad. They work quite well. The 
nowhere near as well as a ring stretcher. Now, you can see that mine's getting in a bit of a state, but I used to put um, electrical tape up this and then just put a craft knife up the splines just to split it so that it protects the ring a bit. This one does have ring sizes on it, but I don't need to see them. I've got a mandrel that I use for sizing it. Um, so, I mean, you do want to try and protect. You can wrap your coin in PTFE tape. Um, I find that a little bit fiddly and a bit of a pain. So, if I'm particularly fussy about protecting the inside of the coin, I just put it through a bit of tissue. So, I'm going to start stretching this out now until it becomes like a section of a cylinder so basically shove that over the stretcher until it gets down to the bottom now this is definitely one that you learn and you get a feel for you stretch it, I know I very rarely go all the way the handle will go right across there but I just stretch it bring it back, twist the coin, stretch it, bring it round, twist the coin, stretch it. And you need to get a feel for this because it may be that you want to anneal the coin again. You want to keep the coin pretty level while you're doing it, stretching it, just coming down the stretcher. Can sort of get a feel for how much pressure you're having to put on it to stretch it. Now I'm up against my tape and everything's getting in my way, so I'll get rid of that. Get that over there. Now you can snap the coin doing this. If it's going to snap, this is when it'll happen. Feels all right to me at the moment, though. No. Right, so if you can see that, I don't know whether that will focus, but it's not far off it now. But it's getting a little bit hard, so I'm going to anneal it again, and then I'll carry on. All right, well I've uh, just annealed it again. It's a bit wet, so. I don't think I've got too much further I can go on here before it's going to just be as far as the cone on the actual stretcher itself is. We'll get another one out of it. Right, that's about as far as I'm going to go before it's just going to keep getting the same cone as the ring stretcher. So I'm going to put it over the other way. One more. And that's pretty much it. That's um, reasonably flat. Bit on a flat surface, it's not wobbling about. Still need to do more work on it anyway in that respect. But there is it's pretty much close to a cylinder as we're going to get at this stage. Well, yeah, at this stage. And to all intents and purposes, you've made a coin ring now. Except it's a rather large coin ring. It's even too big for my middle finger and I've got fat fingers. So of course that's not the end. We've now got to shape it. Polish it, clean it, do whatever we're going to do to it. But, um... This is probably too big for me mandrel. Nah, still fits it. Alright, there is um, a point I want to get across here at the moment. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. I 
Right, so hopefully you can just see that shiny edge where I've run me little sanding drum. I think I said disc earlier. What I meant was a little sanding drum. Yeah, there's a better thing. You can see that I've just taken the, the actual milled edge that sticks out. When you make one, you'll feel it. You'll know what I'm talking about. And that just helps a little bit. the sizing. I mean basically the point I'm trying to get across is if you have this ring completely flat on the outside it can't possibly be completely flat on the inside and you can feel that to a point when you've got them on but not much not by the time it's finished Get that bit there anyway. Right, so now we have to try and put a size on it, and to do that, I use little 10 degree sizing tools that I make. And before I do that, I'm also just gonna run a little bit of um, wet and dry just around the edges, just to get the edges on the cut side smooth. If you're using Delrin balls, you'll have already done this and they might not need doing, but at this is the point where I do it. So I'm just going to run that round a block. Go and get one. <clears throat> I just use one of these soft, spongy sanding blocks with emery paper on them and just run it around the, the edge, the outside edge of the cut side of the coin. Just using it at an angle, just taking the sharpness off it. That's it. I mean, the inside's not so bad, and we'll sort of finish that a bit later on. Right, so I'll go and get the other tool. Right, so this is the little set of tools I use for sizing and finishing a ring. They're, um, they're double ended, one side of them is a 30, 25 and a 20 millimetre diameter cone and they're 3 millimetres smaller on the other sides so we've got 27, 22, 27 and I think that's 17 when I say 3 millimetres smaller I mean 3 millimetres to each side so that's a 30 and a 27 and they fit most coins the sizes you'd ever want to need I mean the big one and time I mean that's that's a that would be a, as big as you're likely to get if you had a wider banded one if you'd have done this with a a 10 mil punch then that would be going down it would be sticking out and you could use the biggest one of them all on there I'm going to have to use that on this one with a space with a spacer in it just to start the pressing of this one. Now you can do this on the oh, the, the hydraulic press, or well, these are made small enough to actually go under a ring a ring press. These will fit in the ring press. You don't get an awful lot of room. But uh, I'm just going to get a little push rod to put in here and show you pushing them down and shaping them and sizing them. 